made the dua, and immediately he had answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his dua. Today, we heard about the importance of dua. Some etiquettes of the dua, supplication, invocation. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced the Prophet Sayyidina Zakariya alayhi salam. When he made a dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his dua immediately without any delay. Some of you were here today, they remember that I said that some of the prayers or supplications, du'as, may take some time. We heard that the Prophet Ya'qub and Yusuf when they separated, that separation was for about 20 years, the scholars of ulama say. And over these 20 years, they continued making du'a, both of them. But the answer was found only after 20 years. But here we see a prophet whose name is Zakaria salam, who made a dua. What was that dua for? He made dua. Ya Allah, my Lord, bless me, grant me a child. Grant me a child because Zakaria salam, he had reached an age when normally you cannot father, you cannot be, become a parent or father at that age. So he said that my condition is like this, but I need a child, Allah. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although he, used, he had prayed many times before, but this time there was a particular reason why his prayer got, his dua got quickly answered and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran says, over there, on that spot, Zakaria called his Lord and asked for a child, for a baby. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him. Now what was that? What, 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 what was the reason or motive? What led to this kind of quick answer? The reason was that, my dear brothers and sisters, he witnessed a miracle, a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what was that sign? He witnessed the miracle of Maryam radiallahu anha getting force, off-season force, on her table, in her private room, when there was no access for anyone to enter her room, she received she received force off season force. Now that moved Zakaria when he witnessed his yaqeen. He was a prophet of Allah, but when he saw this concrete miracle, power of Allah, he made that du'a with that fresh inspiration. And that clicked, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala straight away answered. Now, what, what has that to do with tonight? Exactly, this is what we're going to do. You may not witness off-season force on your tables. There may be dinner waiting outside, maybe. But it's not, they, you won't be witnessing any miracles right now. But we all do experience some spiritual hype, some increase in our Iman, increase in our Yaqeen. When we hear the stories of miracles, when we listen to amazing mu'jizah, extraordinary blessings that Allah bestowed on our prophets and on pious people, it actually boosts our Iman. Our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when our iman and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is spiritually, mentally gets strong, that is the time we ask Allah, Allah, please, please answer me. 
We make dua after salah because the salah has boosted our spiritual state. When we hear stories, when you hear stories that someone shares, or when you read stories of the prophets in the books, the hadith in the Sirah, it actually makes you a different person. Maybe after a while, that level of inspiration may go a little bit, you know, weaker and weaker. But when we hear the stories, Alhamdulillah, our mind is fully prepared. And, you know, that's what I said. If you remember that I said that we must make dua or pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a faith that Allah is right with me, closest to me. Okay? فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my servants ask you, where am I? Can Allah hear me? Because he's far. No, tell them no. He's not far. He's قَرِيبٌ Very close to you. Now that قُبَ That closeness, that proximity. We need to have that feeling. Then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our and our uh, prayers, our invocations, supplications will be answered. And that is what we are doing, inshallah, this evening. We will try to go to each dimension, not all of them, I do not have time. I can't cover all of them, inshallah. Tomorrow there is ISQ, monthly Mila program at Washdale. We might cover some points in that speech as well. But inshallah, some areas, let's now find out how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed our Habib Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the most amazing, one of the most amazing miracles. It wasn't just like that, okay, take this miracle. No. There was a background for that. Habib Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a very difficult time. My dear brothers and sisters, it's so easy for all of us to sit in this room or at home, drive on the roads so comfortably with full freedom. We don't have any problems in our life. If you still, you know, judge yourself you're going through difficulties and sufferings, it's an insult. We are insulting those great prophets and the salihin, the pious people, sahaba, because whatever problems that we're going through, it is nothing. Habibuna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to go through terrible times at the hands of his own people, boys, boys of Mecca. They tortured him to maximum they could. And they imposed a sanction on him and all entire family members. We know that. In a valley known as Wadi Bani Hashim. Wadi Abi Talib. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family members, including Abu Talib, was not a Muslim. But because he was supporting and he was a family member, they kept to them in a prison like, perhaps worse than that. Within, they confined them or they kept to them within the boundaries or borders of this valley known as Wadi Abu Talib for a number of years. You might wonder, what's that? What's so about it? What's a big deal about it? My dear brothers and sisters and lovely children, you know what that situation was? People were not allowed to serve or supply any food items, anything to them. It was a total boycott. It was total cut from all the supplies. And that anyone who supplies Muhammad and his families with any food items, that families or that person will suffer. And that was terrible. And many people, the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba family members, many of them, they suffered from malnutrition, they without getting food, starvation. In the book of Sirah, we can see that some of them were forced to eat the grass, 
cut up to grass. That again, what grass can you get in a desert of Mecca? Subhanallah, all this was to have the freedom of preaching Islam. And because of this,